exist. I've put shavings all over myself. I'm a wreck. Hey! Hey! So, welcome back. Uh, hey, we're ready to put this son of a bitch together. Who's excited? I know I am. All right. This sounded sarcastic, but it's not. Okay, so this is the part where I finally opened the instruction manual back up. Because <laughs> I, you know, forgot. Okay, so anyway, so this is the part where you're actually going to need some kind of specific tools. And I've been trying to avoid that. But it's kind of hard to avoid when it comes to getting the neck right, okay? First thing you need to do is to make sure the neck is straight. And the thing that I use for that is called a notched straight edge. So, so this is a straight edge, you know, like we used a straight edge before when we were lining everything up, uh, except it has notches cut out of it. These notches are cut out so that it goes over the frets because you want to know if the fret board is flat, not if the frets are flat. We're going to check and see if the frets are flat after we know that the fret board is flat. Makes sense? Doesn't have to. That's what's going on. So anyway, there's notches on different on each side of these to fit different scale lengths. Um, I got this one, I think on Wish or somewhere. I got it really cheap and, you know, but it, it works pretty well. You can make these. You can buy a, a cheap ruler like this. This is like an aluminum ruler from like the, the uh, fabric store. You can buy one of these and you can just cut notches in it. Of course, you want it to be a little bit shorter because this is like longer than the whole guitar. But, you know, cut it off about here. Measure out your frets and cut notches in it. Boom, you have yourself a notch straight edge and it didn't cost you an arm or a leg. Like I said, you can buy them on Wish and Amazon. They take, if you if you buy them off Wish, you gotta wait a month before you get it, so. Anyway, so we're gonna check the flatness with, with this. Hi, welcome to Eye Level Town. Okay, so we got our notch straight edge and we're gonna put this on the fretboard and it's not fitting over the fret, so I'm using the wrong side, so I gotta flip it over. What you want to do is make sure this fits over all the frets. And then you just hold it on here and you look and you look for any light. And I don't see any light, so this one's actually actually straight. How about that? Sweet. Okay, so we know that our neck is flat. Now we want to use this thing called a fret rocker. Basically, this is just a, a five different straight edges. I also got this from Wish. Actually, I got this maybe from Amazon because it came with the fret rocker and a uh, fret file, which is a file that is concave so you can make the round shape on the frets. And then these fret guards that fit over the frets. So when you're working on them, you don't scuff up your fretboard. All right, so the way that a fret rocker works is you use whichever edge fits over three frets. And that's why there's all these different edges, because when you get down here, it fits over like five frets. So you got to flip it around to a shorter one. And then, you know, here and here, you just want to, you know, fit over for th over three frets. So anyway, you place it on the fret, and then you see if it will rock. Now you hear that? Listen closely. That means that this one is a little bit higher than one of these. But, it's, but they're flat down here. So where it's high, I'm going to use a marker to mark it. Just so I know in the next few minutes. So then you do the next one. This whole fret's high. Okay, so it seems that several of the frets are high, so we're going to do something else here. I had hopes that the frets would be level, but, you know, it's rare in the case that they're all perfectly level to begin with. So, what I'm going to have to do is level them. And there's a couple ways to level them. I have this fret leveling file from Crimson Guitars, which you could buy one from them if you want to. I got mine for free. I won a contest on Instagram. Thanks, Crimson. And... You know, but if you don't want to buy a specialty tool like that, you can take a piece of wood that you know is flat. I have a wood shop, so I ran this through my joiner, so I know that it's flat. But, you know, if you don't have that, you know, you just find something that you know is flat. Ugh, 
You can also use a level, you know, like a level that you use for, like one of these that you use, you know, to make sure things are level. These are always flat right here. And you can take it and take the flat side and just stick some sandpaper on there. You can buy the adhesive back sandpaper or you can use regular sandpaper and like spray adhesive or something, you know, and just put that on there and then you have a flat thing. I have this one that I made out of a flat piece of wood and it's got sandpaper on it. And what you do is you take and you mark all the frets, right? You put black or red or green, or whatever color, you put some marker on top of all the frets. Okay, so now that you have all your frets marked with black, you take your thing that you know is flat, and you just, and you just do this until all the Sharpie is gone. You can also take this opportunity to get these edges and make sure that there's not any little bits that are sticking out to cut your hands. Now our frets are level. And now the problem that we have is that all of our frets are flat on top and you don't want your frets flat. Flat frets are bad. So that's when we use our crowning file to crown them back over. We'll take our marker again and we'll just mark the very tops of them again. Then you take this crowning file that is concave on both sides. I don't think the two sides are any different, but you just file it, right? So since it's since it's concave, and you've got a fret that is now flat on the top, so you take this concave thing and you put it on this flat fret, it's not touching in the middle. So as we file it down and this becomes round, more and more of this will touch it. We don't want it to touch at the very, very point because we don't want to make this any lower than it already is. So that's why we put the black marker there so that whenever you crown, you're taking away that marker until there's just a little sliver of marker left. This is just a big old paintbrush that I broke the handle off of. And it's a great dusting off things brush. Okay, before we go on to our next step, I'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsor for this video. This video is sponsored by me, Joe Pierce Maker. You can buy stuff on JoePierceMaker.com. I actually have an order form for custom guitars now if you ever wanted to buy a guitar. And some of the other stuff that I've made, if you watch my channel, I make you know, turned items and resin and wood and pens and stuff. So, um, you know, if you want something that I make, that's the best place to buy it from. Also, my new t-shirt store that I've mentioned in, like, every video. Go buy a t-shirt, a hat, a hoodie, a bag, coffee cup, whatevs. I need some money. Back to the video. Okay, so now we've got our neck flat, we've got our frets flat, and we've got our frets crowned. We've taken care to make sure there's no frets sprout. Fret sprout, it sounds like it's when the frets move, but frets don't move. They're made out of metal. Fret sprout is what happens when the neck wood shrinks and becomes narrower than the frets, and then they stick out. And then when you go to slide your hand up while you're playing, you cut, the sh you cut your hand real bad. Um, and another thing that helps keep that from happening is if you take these little edges of each fret, these little corners of the fret, you take another file, or you can use an emery board for this. An emery board is the safest way to go if you're inexperienced. An emery board like you use for your fingernails. Anyway, you take these and you just round this edge over just a little bit. And it just makes this feel smooth where it's not sharp feeling like the one next to it.
as I know this is is kind of tedious with the with the fret work, but honestly, fret work is one of the most important things on the guitar. I mean, of course, getting everything lined up, having the strings go the right direction and all that is important. But the big difference between a cheap guitar and a good guitar is the fret job and, and, and the pickups. Cheap pickups aren't going to sound super good. But I've used cheap pickups that did sound good. Hey, you know, but the, the frets are going to have a lot to do with the playability. You know, if, you got, if you're trying to play and you got stuff buzzing or you're cutting your hand, it's not a good time, right? So fret job is important. Don't skip it. I mean, you can skip it. But it's going to sound like a cheap guitar. If you do, if you you want to play well, do a fret job. Now we need to polish the frets. All right. So once you've done the thousand grit, there's a couple different things you can do. I mean, you could stop there, but if these aren't polished high enough, then whenever you are fretting a string and you bend it, you're actually going to feel it go on that not smooth surface. So there's many different ways to polish these. You can actually take a little, a little buffing wheel on a Dremel and, and some polishing compound and polish each one of them that way. I happen to have these fret rubbers from Crimson Guitars. <laughs> Another plug for Crimson. But I haven't tried these yet. So I'm going to try these for the first time and see how I like them. Basically what these are, they're little erasers that are made out of grit, and they're super fine grit. Well, there's coarse, medium, fine, and super fine. And now, we can assemble the guitar. First thing I'm going to put on is the tuning machines. Okay, so... Three of them go this way, and three of them go that way. Basically, you want the flat side uh, towards the top. And see, these just these press really well into the holes. And you're done. I'm kidding. You're not done. So you want to make sure that these are like even, right? So really, I, I put them in too soon, but I was excited. And if you drop them on the floor, they'll be good and scuffed up in case you want to make a relic guitar. Anyway, so now we're going to need another flat object. You can use anything. I'm going to use this. It's a short ruler. So anyway, you want to line up the flat edges of these where they are even with each other. Hey, they're even. Okay. Now each one of these has a little screw hole for a screw. So we're done with our flat object. Now we need a pointy object. I have a Jimmy Duresta ice pick, but you can use any flat or any pointy object. And you want to go and just poke a little poke right here in the middle of these guys so you know where your screw hole needs to be. Then take them back out. Now you have a little indention where you're going to drill. Okay, so you're going to drill with the smallest drill bit that you have. This is a sixteenth of an inch. I don't know that, what that is in millimeters. I'm sorry, England. And you're just going to... You don't want to drill all the way through. So I'm not going to put this on on high speed, I'm going to keep it slow. And you're just going to drill in a little bit. Just so that screw has somewhere to go without breaking off. Now, one thing you can do to make sure you drill deep enough is you can take your drill bit and the screw and kind of figure out how much of the screw is going to go in there. And then just see if it fits yeah, so I don't go the full depth of the screw because I want the pointy end of the screw to have something to bite into once it gets down in there. That could be completely the wrong way to do it, but that's how I do it. 
Also, when you're putting these screws in, it does not hurt to have a little bit of paste wax or some kind of wax on the screw so that it slides in there a little easier because these screws most likely are cheap and they most likely will break if you're not careful. So I just put a little bit of wax on them. This is paste wax. You get this at like Lowe's or Home Depot. I use it on lots of stuff. And you don't have to like really crank down on it. This screw is not what's holding this thing together. It just keeps it from turning. Now because this is an, in an inexpensive kit, I assume that it's inexpensive because it's got inexpensive hardware. So with my experience with inexpensive hardware, I've had a lot of screws break off inside guitars and that is a terrible time. So when you're screwing these in, don't like force them. I can't stress that enough. Just go easy. That's why I'm putting the wax. That's why I'm pre-drilling the hole. Because if you break a screw off inside here, it sucks. Also, I kind of, I try my best to only put a screw in one time. Like don't put a screw in if you feel like you're going to have to take it back out to do something else. And if you do take it back out, just get a new screw. You know, I have had a lot of situations where, you know, I took out a screw to redo something, and when I go to put the screw back in, it's already been stressed, and then it breaks. All right, now I can flip it over. You take one of these nuts and one of these washers and you put it in there and you tighten it down. Okay, so now we want to tighten these down with looks like a 10 millimeter. Yep. You don't have to get the whole ratchet out, you know, you can just use the socket. Just tighten it by hand. And now you have your tuning machines installed. Huzzah! So now we're going to mount the body bushings. And what those are... my little knife go? Those are these. Uh, these are what hold the bridge and the tailpiece on the guitar. And the way it works is this bushing right here gets hammered down into these holes, right? And then this part screws into that and then the bridge sits on that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this little guy right here. This is a like a countersink. And I'm just going to without the drill I'm just going to, by hand, chamfer this hole a little bit. And that just helps the bushing slide in there a little easier. So now you take your bushing and you sit it in here and you whack it in with a hammer. Now, since I don't want to hit directly on this guitar with a hammer, I'm going to use a block of wood. Just any block of wood, set it on here, and then hit that. Now, another thing I noticed that I'm doing, I'm hitting this and it... The weight is sitting on the neck right now. I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna take my neck rest away and I'm gonna slide back towards the end of the bench so that the body is sitting flat. Once you hear a solid thunk, it's all the way in. Before it's all the way in, it sounds kind of soft. Tap, 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 tap. Thunk, it's in. Now we have these same bushings for the stop tailpiece. But before you put the stop tailpiece in, what the hell? They got this wrapped up with like super plastic. Before you go and knock these in here, there is a little hole that you can see if you're not over there and you're over here. There's a hole right here. And that hole is for a ground wire. 
because it's an electric guitar and everything has to be grounded, including the strings. So in the wire that comes with the kit, take one of these longer pieces, you separate it, you strip a bit of it, and you go ahead and feed this wire through here. So you want to feed you want to feed the wire through here to where the copper part is still showing and you kind of stuff that in in the hole here. So now whenever I knock the bushing in, it's going to hold that piece of wire and the wire is going to touch the bushing, which is then going to touch the post, which is then going to touch the tailpiece, which is then going to touch the strings, therefore the strings will be grounded. Did I over-explain that enough? Leave a comment now if you need me to over-explain that further. All right, now these posts screw right into here. Stop, tailpiece, and it goes on here. And this is your bridge. And it goes here. Allegedly. There we go. That was a little weird, but it's okay. This kit comes with two sets of strings. And this first set looks pretty cheap. That's okay. Because we're going to use these to do some tests. I'm going to put the two E strings on. And you know, these may be good strings. I don't know. I'm just judging the book by its cover is all. These might be the best strings I've ever used. Okay, now, I put two strings on, and they are just laying across the frets. So I know this is too low, but I was expecting that anyway. So to raise this, you give it the lefty-loosey treatment. And this screwdriver does not fit down in there. Don't use this screwdriver. I got my two strings on there, and now I can really check for sure that my neck is straight. And it looks like it is. There's a pretty good distance between the two from the edge. So, we're good there. Alright, so now I want to get our pickups lined up. You got two pickups, a bridge and a neck. The bridge is stamped with a B, so you know that's the bridge. You want to put the neck in first, because you have to run this wire through this hole. Because this goes into where the bridge pickup is. And something isn't wanting to go in. So this is the pickup ring, and this is the pickup, right? The pickup sits inside the pickup ring. This is what holds the pickup to the body. When I put the pickup in here, with the ring, it doesn't fit, right? The problem is the hole here is not wide enough for the edge of the pickup ring and the pickup to both fit in there. So I have two options. I can either go through the arduous task of taking material off here so that it fits, or I can go through the slightly easier task of taking material off here so that, so that it fits here. So that's what I'm going to do. It worked. It didn't take much. And now it fits. So now I want to make sure that it's lined up this way. All right, so I'm going to tighten these strings back up and make sure you're, you're even over the poles. Oh, and now you're going to take your sharp object again. Remember our sharp, ob sharp object? We're going to poke more little holes for reference here. And then take everything back out. And you want to do this same thing with the bridge, but it's not as uh, difficult because you know it's going to fit around there.
I've got my screws here. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before with the paste wax. Because I don't want these screws to break off either. You can also put a little, you can, instead of this, you can use soap or a candle or anything like that. All right, so I've got both pickups in, and now it's time to wire up the rest of the electronics. I could go into detail about how to wire up the electronics, but I ain't. <laughs> Wiring is not my strong suit, right? Soldering or soldering, however you want to say it, is not my strong suit, but I get by. <laughs> so what I'm going to tell you about this part is follow the wiring diagram. That's what I'm going to do. It's still a mystery to me, but if you follow the diagram, you can't mess it up. So, there's that. So it's the next day, and I finally got it wired up. I, 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 again, not going to explain how to wire it. Follow the wiring diagram to your best, to the best of your ability. Because this was, this was tough. I finally got it working. I had to try it a couple different times. There was a ground that I was missing. If you're missing one ground, no sound. That rhymes. I didn't mean for it to. Anyway, what's next? Next, they go into adjusting the neck and all that stuff, which I've already done, pretty much. Um, and you wanted to go and you wanted to, like, set up your guitar and all that, right? So, I'm not going to get into setting up a guitar in this series... Maybe later. There's lots of videos on how to set up a guitar. So, uh, we gotta finish it up. There's really only two more things that need to go on. This back plate and the pick guard. So the back plate is super easy. You just set it in place. Not backwards though. Set it in place. Use your sharp thing to mark out the holes, drill them, and then screw in the screws, just like we did everything else. Very satisfying. Now, we have a particular little problem here. The pick guard doesn't seem to fit in between the two pickups. I may have installed them wrong, or it could be some, another problem. So, what can we do? What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a little bit of material off each side so that it will fit. You can file it away or you can take a knife or a blade and scrape it away. But you want to make sure that you're scraping it flat because I'm putting a curve in it and that's not a good thing. So I can go back to the file and even it up. I feel like the blade takes more material away faster. Because you get those little shavings. Then the file evens it out. Alright, it fits now. A little bit of a hack job, but, you know, fine. You would not believe how easy these screws go in with this wax on them. Night and day, I tell you. And we're almost done. Three more screws to put in. Truss rod cover. Be really careful not to drill all the way through the head. Because, um, that would look bad. I almost forgot 
We have to put on the strap buttons. All right, now the last step is to put the rest of the strings on and get it tuned up and then rock out. That was corny. I should cut that. I probably won't. Um, anyway, put the strings on it and play it. All right, and now it is technically done. Hooray! Uh, so, okay, I will talk a little bit about setup. Um, I noticed out of the box, this one, the nut is really high. So that means that the strings are really high off the frets. So. So whenever you go to fret them, they kind of go out of tune. And um, so that's no problem. You can take files and file those down to where they are, they are the right height. Um, also, scale length. So a guitar has a particular scale length, right? Scale length is from the nut to the saddle of the bridge, right? And on each guitar, it's, you know, such and such inches, right? The length doesn't necessarily matter as long as the frets were put in correctly because the 12th fret is exactly half. So if you take a tuner, which I don't have in here, the one that's kind of, you know, it's a high precision tuner, right? And you hit the string and it's in tune open. Then you hit the 12 and it's got to be exactly the same, but one octave up. If it's not exactly the same, it's a little sharp or a little flat, you move this little screw here and this moves back and forth until it's correct. And it's really minor, like really minor adjustments, but it makes a big difference in how it sounds overall. But anyway, I'm gonna work on that stuff a little bit, and then we're gonna come back with an amp, and we're gonna play it and see how it sounds. So hey, thanks for watching, and uh, I may do another follow-up video on this series. Uh, may do some improvements, maybe change some electronics, change some hardware. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, overall, I'm happy with this kit, and uh, 10 out of 10 would build again. So again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.